Hello to my online learners and let's continue on with the integumentary system or the skin. So when we're looking at the skin, we're going to look at, again, this unit is another unit that's got a lot of depth and information and we don't need to go that deep. We're basically going to look at the function of skin, then we're going to look at the different layers between the dermis and the epidermis, touch briefly on the layer underneath. Look briefly at hair, briefly at nails, and then again, briefly at sweat glands. So although this is another one loaded with information, we're not going to look in, in that much detail with it. So when you look at it, here is a perfect example of how your textbook puts very information in a little squishy little com uh, um, box here. So the body... The skin is very important to your survival because it separates you from the outer environment and it also keeps all your stuff in. So when you look at it here, um, the role of it is to separate the internal from the external, protect the body from invasion of harmful substances, maintain homeostasis, um, sensory nerves, and help with mo to permit movement and changes in disease and then the appendix so it's again it's all kind of squished in there let me summarize it for you in a slide here so the function of the skin is to protect you from the elements of outside also to protect and have uh, perfect protect you from um protect your guts, keep them inside. Your skin is a barrier. We'll talk about it being the first line of defense when we talk about disease. You need healthy skin to keep your pathogens out. It's also a barrier to prevent you from drying out. Your skin is amazing and making vitamin D production. Now, sadly, most of the year up in, in Red Deer, we don't get enough sun to have vitamin D made. Um, and most of the time our skin is covered. So it's important you take vitamin D supplements. And we'll talk more about how vitamin D is used up in calcium when we talk about bones. And um, it's also, I just actually read that vitamin D can help prevent the coronavirus from um, landing too, which is good. Your skin, very important for sensory perception. You touch it, you feel it. It will keep you safe in terms of if you're on heat it will move away if there's something painful it will trigger your body to move away and it also allows you to interact with the environment and the people around you another important thing of the skin that you may not think of is thermal regulation you may notice that if you're pasty white like me and then when you get hot i get very red and that's because my blood vessels in my face will vasodilate to allow more blood to the surface to then allow for heat to be released from my body okay and if you're cold your blood vessels in your skin and your extremities will shut down shunting blood to your organs in order to help you stay warm and keep your core warm okay so those are the main functions of the skin very good multiple answer type of question good let's look back at the textbook when we talk about the different layers when we look at the layers let's just make me go away today okay when we look at the layers there are two layers sometimes three layers depending on um, what textbook you talk to Basically, you have two layers of skin and then you have an under layer. So the two layers, epi means on top of, so the epidermis is the top layer, the dermis is the bottom layer. Then you have the subcutaneous layer or the hypodermis. Hypo means below, so it is the layer below. Now, when you're looking at skin, there is this lovely little zigzaggy uh, layer that actually shows up quite dark. And it's the zigzaggy layer or a rolly layer, it's kind of a hilly layer, that separates the epidermis, which is above, from the dermis below. Because this layer is the layer where the cells for the top layer of skin are created, the basal layer. And this top layer has very poor blood supply or none. It gets its, it gets its nutrition from below it. And also, um, it gets 
keratinized and becomes dead on the outer layer. So this is a beautiful example of stratified um, epidermis, um, stratified squamish because you have all the different layers. Okay, then below the dermis is the layer that's important. It's where the nerves are, the vessels are. Um, so if you look at it, you've got your blood supply, you've got your nervous tissue. So here you have your little pressure receptor and then you can also have a pain receptor. You have the shaft of your hair goes down. You have the sebaceous or oil gland on your hair, which will um, protect and lubricate the hair. You also have your venous return and you also have your muscles which hold up your ner your hair, uh, giving goosebumps. We'll talk more about that when you talk about, um, you know, how a scared cat, the, the hair rises. That's called piloerection, okay? And then you also have your glands and you have two types of glands depending on where your body is. You have the apocrine gland, which will secrete an oilier, thicker, smelly sweat, such as in your armpits. And then you have the exocrine, which is usually the waterier sweat, which is used to cool down your skin or thermoregulate because as water evaporates off your skin, you cool down. Good. So this is the layer and you've got these papillae. Papillae is basically a, a general word for a, uh, a bump. Okay. So two layers and then your under layer or your subcutaneous layer. When you look at the epidermis, there are a bunch of layers to the epidermis, seven depending on which layer you're looking at, but I'm mainly concerned with um, two layers. The outer layer, which is called the stratum corneum, and this is where it's cornified or it is dead with keratin. And as these cells, okay, let's start from the beginning here. The basal layer is the stratum basale, which is right here. And this is the one that stains the darkest and is the most obvious. This is where the cells are that undergo mitosis to produce new cells. So this is a very important layer to, um, to growth. And if you're tattooing, you have to get to this layer in order to keep your tattoo from wearing off. Okay. So seven layers. I'm only concerned with the basal layer and the uh, corneum layer. Now, the protein that will grow into the cells as it grows up and out is called keratin. Very tough, very fibrous, um, and it will cause the cells to flatten. It will also push out the nucleus. And when you get these cells that don't have the nucleus and they're now flattened, these are called keratinocytes. And once you get to this dead outer layer, this is when you have your stratum corneum. And this is the layer that flakes off, but is very good at protecting you because it's tight, it's waxy, it's dead. And, and these people who want you to exfoliate, you're really just repairing or removing this really beautiful layer, which can be up to 10 layers of durable skin that helps protect you from, uh, keeps you watertight. It has a little bit of oil on it to keep you from your bacteria from coming in. And it's a really good coat, but it does flake off, especially in the winter and flaking can be kind of nasty. Okay. So a lot of layers in the epidermis. I'm morally concerned with the basal and the corneum layers. When you look at skin color, just a, a brief one here, you have your melanocytes and your melanocytes will produce the melanin and it's the melanin which then goes underneath and will um, darken your skin. If you have, uh, and in my case, it will give me my, my tan or my freckles. Okay, Mel melanin. Good. Then, so here's a lovely, the diagram or the functions of the skin in this table. You've got the skin as a protection. It's a barrier, vitamin D, sensory and thermoregulation. Hmm, this could be important. Okay. When you look at the dermis layer, the dermal layer of the skin, we're not going to go into all the layers of the dermis, but I want you to realize the dermis is where everything important 
a curse. If you damage the dermis, if you damage the epidermis, no big deal unless you get to this basal layer. But if you damage the dermis, this is when you get bleeding and blistering. And um, if you really damage it, you will get scarring because it can't heal. Okay, so if you have a little bit of blood, that's okay. It will regenerate. But if you have too much damage, it will not regenerate. And this is a, in what's called a third degree burn. Okay, good. Now, when we look at two main parts of the integumentary system, they are very important because hair is used to prevent uh, friction on your body and also in some areas to keep dirt out of certain areas. So when you look at it, the part of the hair, notice that the hair is fed down below from the blood supply, but only the bottom part, the bulb, is the part that grows. Once it grows, or once it continues to grow, it is dead. So it's only the follicle that has the nervous and blood supply. Once it comes to the top, it's dead and it's called a shaft. So let's look at it. You've got the hair bulb, which is the lowest part. This is the part where growth and mitosis in the hair cell occurs. Then you've got the follicle, which still has a good blood supply and nerve supply. And then once it comes out, you've got the shaft. The hair is living, but only down in the bulb area. And that is where it gets fed by the papillae, which have the connective tissue and the blood supply, and it's down at the bulb. Okay, good. Then if you've ever seen a cat fluff up because it's scared, or a really good example is um, birds fluff up. Anyway, when things fluff up, I guess birds don't have hair, but uh, a dog will fluff up when it's outside and it's cold. That's because it has this erector muscle and this erector muscle will cause your hair to stand on end. You may have noticed it if you have um, goosebumps. What goosebumps are is your skin being cold. So it kind of traps, it, it puts the hair up to try and trap the, uh, the air around it to make you warm, but we're not very hairy anymore. So um, it doesn't matter. And usually most humans work really hard at removing the hair from the body other than on the head. Okay, good. So that's pretty much all you need to know about hair is the parts. When we look at the nails, there's a lot of different parts to the nail. I just want you to realize the nail is keratinized epithelial cell and the free edge is dead. The only part that is living is down at the, um, the nail bed here. <coughs> and it is the root where it's hidden. This is where it grows from. So you can damage part of the nail and as long as you don't damage the nail body or the nail root, it will continue to be a healthy one. Okay. Um, and mainly the process or the purpose of the nails is to protect the finger, but also to add an extra um, strength to the end of the fingertips. Okay. Good. Now, when we talk about sweat glands, there are two types of sweat glands and they're categorized on pretty much where they feed to and what kind of sweat they give off. So you have an eccrine gland and those are the ones that come right to the surface. They're very coily, very good surface area. They are widespread, especially on places um, that you wanna be cooled. So your palms, your forehead and your upper toes torso. When they sweat, it's a very watery sweat and a little bit of salt, salty. This is mainly to eliminate some waste, but mainly to thermoregulate. Then you have the apocrine glands. Notice the apocrine glands come right out to the hair follicle. And these will, these are mainly where you have stinkier sweat, or stinkier, thicker sweat, such as your, your armpit and your groin. These are the ones that respond to stress and sexual stimulation. And these are the ones that become very functional in puberty. These are um, more liquidy, or sorry, more, more thicker, if that makes sense. And these are the ones that um, they don't cause body odor. So they don't come out stinky, but because of the oiliness of them, 
bacteria will accumulate in this area and the, as the bacteria degrades the sweat, that's what produces the odor, okay? So two types of glands, eccrine, which is produce watery air, sweat all over the body, goes right to the surface. Apocrine, thicker, only in the axil axillary and anogenital area, and they are thicker and um, go out to the hair cell. Good. Now, I want you just to look at burns and these other nasty things in the fact that basically the first class, second class, or third class is based on how deep you go. If you go first class burn is usually just surface level, no damage. Um, usually it's red. You can get, um, if you get any blistering, you have a second degree burn. So sunburn where you blister, that's second degree. And what happened is when you get any blistering or damage the dermis, you're now down to second degree. And if you go right through the dermis, this is where you get to third degree, okay? Same thing with um, any cuts or lesions. Quite often it's epidermis, dermis right through the dermis okay so that that is a lot of um quick information on the um in integumentary system but again just surface area surface level make sure you know the functions of the skin make sure you know the layers um but in terms of the epidermis you only need to know the names of two of them and the dermis you basically just need to know what's down there okay and that's it for chapter six.